Hmm. Hey there, young gamer. Why don't you have a seat? It's uh, it's time we had a talk. Now, campaign might be getting on up there in years, and uh, maybe you're starting to feel a, a few new things. Isn't that right, Jim? Yeah, you know, the things that excited you about this when you first started just aren't cutting it anymore. And you find yourself thinking, gosh, I really got to explore new things, new ideas and experiences in order to freshen things up and keep that spark that you had in the beginning. Now, I think that uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. And Pruitt and I are going to sit here and talk about the ways that you can spice up your, uh, your gaming experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that right, Pruitt? Yeah, let's um, let's let's talk about romance in uh, in your game, in uh, your your ro your role playing game, your your game that you it's role it's 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 romance yeah. on WebDM. Join legendary monster hunter Desmond Hawkeye as he discovers Monsters of the Underworld, a new fifth edition book by K Wood Publishing. The book will have at least a hundred new monsters like the Behemoth the Dwarf King, the Orc Bat Rider, the Drow Spider Rider, and the Demon Snail, all with color illustrations by Travis Hansen. Plus dragons, giants, drow, dwergar, deep gnomes, undead, fiends, fey, beasts, elementals, and more. Also included are PC subclasses, races, event and encounter tables, and underworld flora. Kickstarter link here and in the description. All right, Jim, um, we need to have a talk. I uh, nope. hope you're okay with it. Yeah, but um, seems fine. The game game could use a little more love. Oh yeah, yeah, could a little use more, a little, little more romance. A little bringing a little togetherness. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, tell all the people now. Smile on your brother. Come together. Try and love one another. Like right now, Jim. Right now is what we need. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But but okay. But all sorry. Right, so what does sorry. the game need? <laughs> the game needs romance. Yeah, yeah. Like, or maybe it doesn't. It, but, it, but yeah. let's talk about putting a little bit of romance uh, into your game. Into your game. So this is a, no pun intended, sticky subject. Because <laughs> I don't ever intend puns. That's Pruitt's deal. It's, it's literally contractual. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a, I think it, it partially is a consequence of how the game evolved, who the primary people that, that were sort of seen to be playing it and that the game catered to. Uh, you know, romance is not something that, say, a bunch of sweaty, acne-faced teenage boys are going to want to get together and role play together. I mean, maybe they do. I don't, you know, I'm not, that's just like my friends were. Um, and so I think it's like something that a lot of people don't think about. However, I think that is changed. Yeah. I think that the more uh, that game groups sort of, uh, you know, see different people playing at them with different experiences and just different outlooks and perspectives, mm -hmm. and that the more uh, that streaming culture and playing online kind of like influence the game, that's kind of where I see it the most and where most of my experiences with romance and games have come from is yeah. from playing online. Definitely. Um, you got you to gotta add a little sm some smooches in. Some smooches, yes. Um. <laughs> There's got to be smooching. But like... The reason why you would you would add it in is because it's going to enhance your game. It's it's romance and intimacy and even sex are are a part of the stories we tell each other in other mediums. Mm -hmm. So like, why would we not have them in our role playing games? Yeah. Other than taboos and comfort and, and those kinds of things, which is why we want to talk about it first. Well, yeah. You know? I mean, you got You have to start with, and we've discussed it before. But there are there are methods you can use, whether it's like X cards, you know, safety tools, things like that. I know yeah. some people scoff at that, but yes. I think it's just communication. And if you if you want to discount communication, then why are we playing in a game where you communicate with one another? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and to just to put a boundary up over a specific aspect of it. So yeah. the first thing, obviously, is consent. Checking That's with true. people's boundaries, what they're comfortable with. Right. Right. Yeah, because you're talking about subjects that are like it's one thing to. Um, you know, to, to say that DD has violence in it, and 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 that that's, uh, you know, violence is acceptable, uh, you know, a level of, of you know whatever in, in your games, but you would never touch anything that's sort of like sexual. I think it's because like most people in their lives, violence is not something they're necessarily going to experience. Certainly not the fantasy life or death situations that are in D and D, mm -hmm. and yet sexual situations, romance, intimacy, like coupling up, all those kinds of things are things that they'll experience. And so their feelings about them are stronger. Their feelings about them are are tied up in their conception of themselves and mm -hmm. the culture that they come from. And like, there's a bit of a remove from the abstracted fantasy violence that D&D has, where it's just a hit point and a hit roll and, and, and you can kind of like have a degree of separation there. Whereas if you're like, you know, bringing 
um, intimate situations into your game, not for a puerile interest, but just because it's going to enhance them, that's a much different subject matter. Yes. And the potential for running into people's boundaries, for uh, for people to discover something about themselves, they're like, I did not know this was a hot button for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like those are greater than in other types of situations that you role play. So sitting down and just talking to the people ahead of time, incorporating it, in, incorporating it into your session zero and finding out where their boundaries are, are very important because you really don't want to move forward on any of the stuff we're going to talk about with like developing romances between two PCs or an NPC mm -hmm. and a PC without explicit metagame. We're going to set the game world aside for a minute yeah. and talk people to people about what we want this thing to look like. The thing is, is there could be some people at your table that, you know, not just because they're Arrested Development fans, but will look at this subject and go, no touching. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, they don't, they want, just, they don't it. Yeah. want it. Whether it's something that happened in their past yeah. or or anything like that, that maybe they just don't want any kind of romance. And that and, and the thing is, is that's fine. Okay, for their character, that's fine. But there are other characters at the table, and everybody's experience can be tailored yeah, yeah. to them. And that includes uh, developing a romance. Sure, um, sure. I, I think that it's, I think you're touching on something important because this is a thing where different people have different opinions about it. And so trying to find the outcome that works for everyone, that allows everyone to have something satisfying uh, in the game and something that they want included without it making uh, someone else at the table uncomfortable or something. Mm -hmm. This is why I think like safety tools can be important. Now, personally, I think play culture, the, the, the way in which you relate to the people around you at the table, the way in which you play, that kind of trumps the formalized tools that are there for uh, for safety, but that doesn't eliminate them. Yeah. It's sort of like, yes, foster a positive play culture at your table in which people are able to talk to each other, mm -hmm. which players can feel like they, they don't have to like keep their, you know, what's bothering them secret or, yeah. or just to just leave without telling anyone um, and, and sort of like basically be friends with your <laughs> gaming group, uh, even if you're not like friend friends with them yeah. otherwise, but treat them uh, that way. And then if you need it, you can fall back on something like, say, Lines and Veils, where it's, you know, the <laughs> handsome barbarian uh, or, you know, you know, goes and, and woos, you know, whoever in the village and they have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. You don't need to go any further than that. We can imply, you know, if, if, it's of particular, if it's a particular consequence to the game that the details are known, and it's okay with the group, you can kind of like give it a rundown or just mm -hmm. like a brief description. Oh, it was great, you know? It was surprisingly gentle and sweet, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, or, I mean, it could be the precursor to an encounter where sure. that, that lovely girl in the village is actually a succubus. Could be something and, like that, you know, yeah. It could be, a, it could be just a, a chance for something interesting to happen. Yeah. Talking about all those, not like in the exhaustive detail with the group, but just saying like, hey, these are some of the situations that I'm thinking, or if you're the DM, putting it on the player and saying like, hey, what do you think about this included in the game? And instead of like you know, imposing something or giving them like, do you want this or this, giving, giving the player permission to say, these are the things that are my hard nose. I do not want you know, anything related to say, rape or, or forced sexual encounters in the game. That's a yeah. lot of people's like, no thank you, please. Um, as well it should be, I mean. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's just one of, I mean, I guess if you've got like five or six people around there and everybody's like, yeah, we would be okay with something like this, then I mean, like that's just between you and the people playing. But our point is like, you know, give it, give it a talk first. The, it's, a, it's a weird subject, right? It's something that people may not really wanna mm -hmm. discuss. They might not feel comfortable being honest about it. So it's something that you would wanna take slow. But I, all of this is not to say don't do it or it needs to be weird and awkward and everything because these are, um, these are, the, these are kind of things you can include in your game that really enhance it mm -hmm. and really bring out something different and special. Yeah. And like, we've had a, a moment where like our two characters yeah. had a romance that yeah. kind of came out, it wasn't planned, it wasn't, um, some, some ships just sailed, Jim. I'm selling you, man. <laughs> uh, it wasn't planned. We didn't necessarily even have a Session Zero talk about it, right? Yeah. Like, we figured it was sort of the gaming group that we were in, uh, you know, it, it's a possibility, and we all sort of seem to uh, trust each other and, and yeah. everything. But it was one of those things where, I think for myself, speaking personally as a player, I've not always been in that place. There have been times in my gaming life where I've been like, yeah, I do not, I don't want anything romance-related in the game. Uh, you know, we might mention it, we might joke about it, 
uh, in, in sort of like a non, you know, try not to be juvenile about it, but, you know, who knows. I mean, uh, at one point we did play the game and we were juveniles, so. Yes, know, well, there, were, mean, there was that one. You know, it does, <laughs> does help you grow up a bit. Right. I, I think it's part of the, of, of the game that can help you. Oh, certainly. I mean, because these are, like, you are learning social interaction skills yeah. via, you know, meta game anyway. Absolutely, yeah. So I'd, I'd like to talk about that, our two characters in a minute, but, yeah. like, getting to sort of, like, Instead of zooming in right now, pulling back out and saying like, okay, you know, we're including these things. We're including, they didn't mean a pun there, uh, sex and intimacy <laughs> and romance, not because it's for anybody's like personal gratification. It's not for the puerile interest. It's not so they can just like get off on describing, you know, their ideal fantasy, whoever. Uh, it is about adding to your game world, yeah. discovering something about your characters and discovering yeah. something about your world and adding another facet, another layer that you include with mm -hmm. everything else. And it's then just like sex and romance and everything is just a part of your game in the same yeah. way that death and, and injury is, in the same mm -hmm. way that madness and corruption are, in the same way that hope and renewal and optimism are. Yeah. They're just a part of it. We're kind of discussing why you want to have this because you know, if you if you have a, a an NPC that a player is interested in, yeah. well, that's a possible new bond. Sure. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Um, and, and and I realize, like 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 you said, you normally don't didn't have romance uh, as part of your characters, and I'm pretty much the same way. Yeah. I I was I was what I consider part of the group that is is the general reason, which is the same reason that players are orphans usually. Or their, <laughs> right, yeah, their yeah. characters are orphans. They don't have any connections. They don't want the DM to be able to use anything, anything against, against them. them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't want to give the DM any cards. But yeah. we're all playing a game, so everybody should have some cards. Right? Yeah, like yeah. It, it gives you a chance to have some tension, some drama. It does give you that. And I think that you're, what you're describing is very common. Because from a DM side, whenever you see people talk about, oh, my, my player or these PCs have like, they have a family or they're married or they're interested in this person or whatever, you will invariably find in one of the replies, kill them, take their loved ones, do this, have, capture them, turn them into undead, do this thing. If that's the only response that a DM has towards mm -hmm. the player saying, I have loved ones in my life or my character's life, hopefully they have loved ones in the player's life, mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> you know, in their character's life, if the only response to the DM is like, oh, I'm gonna threaten them, I'm gonna take that away from you, yeah. then you, you will get players who just never have anything like that. And I do think that this, the sort of like the orphan murder hobo who cares about nothing, has no <laughs> yeah. connections to the game world. Yeah, Bat I, Batman. Yeah, right, <laughs> is, a, is, a consequence, <laughs> is a consequence of adversarial DMing. Yeah, and that it is it, that that uh, archetype as a player is is you know maligned and and ridiculed and sort of like talked down about and everything. Firstly, I love murder hobo games because it's fun. It's a consequence of that adversarial gaming because there were DMs who would just be like, yeah, I you know, oh you have a you're you're married, yeah, uh, good luck. We'll see how long your spouse lasts, mm -hmm. you know, in this campaign and she, take she live in a fortress. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many uh, levels of protection do they have? Um, so that's sort of like my general admonition to DMs, is to treat these NPCs carefully because they represent something important to the player that you don't want to say, like, damage that trust. Mm -hmm. It's already difficult for a lot of people to get really invested in their game worlds, to get really kind of, like, attached uh, in some ways. Now, in other ways, it's get really easy to get attached to your character. Um, so be careful with that and don't automatically jump to, I'm going to threaten that loved one's mm -hmm. life or, or whatever. There's other things you can do, right? Like, oh, other, so many other stories you can tell. Oh my God. You know? Br bring your bring your NPC bard that you kind of want to be an antagonist, maybe a possible villain. Yeah. And maybe they come into woo. You maybe know? they come into woo, Maybe right? Maybe you all go to the bar one night and here's this guy <laughs> and, and you notice your loved one like, oh my. Yeah. You know, add a little jealousy in there. Yes. Or, I mean, what does the loved one do? Right. Do they yeah. have a job? Do they have a position of of, of privilege or mm -hmm. respect or yeah. power that can be threatened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing with this is like, you know, I, I think a lot of DMs have seen these these uh, NPCs as a detriment, as a, sort of like an albatross around the player's uh, player character's neck, and you could take a different look and you go like, well, they could be an asset. The fact that say the the local lord is wooing one of the the PCs in an attempt of a courtship means that you know if, if it plays out and everything you know works out and they end up getting married or whatever or together then that's an asset that's sort of like an ally on the pc side and an Get ally that tax money yo. sure yeah <laughs> that free room and board uh, <laughs> and instead of looking at them as like 
things to threaten, vulnerable points in the, in, the, in the PC's life to threaten, they can instead be like assets and strengths. And mm -hmm. whether it's just like a side scene of role playing or uh, you know, that that relationship is the central focus for a, a, you know, a quest or something or a campaign, there are those opportunities to, uh, you know, to use those things. If, you're, if you like get rid of the idea that these, th these NPCs need to be killed, <laughs> well, know, I mean, it might happen, the right? Like, that's I think the, she shouldn't do that's it. That's the but. thing is you can eventually get to that point. Like there can be a situation mm -hmm. based on how the player and their, their romantic interests act, behave within the, 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 the city or the game. Like, yeah, eventually it gets to the point where somebody might threaten them. But, you know, wait for that. Yeah. Don't start with that. Yeah. Build yeah. up. Let's get to know. It's the rule of three in storytelling, Jim. Mm. you got to have the introduction, then the problem, and, and then the resolution. You can't just jump to it. Yeah, yeah you, you can't, can't jump, jump to it. it. Don't just jump to it. That's sort of, uh, that's sort of like my, our broad, kind of like just general guidelines as we're talking about these things. It's just kind of keep all this stuff in mind and, mm -hmm. and leave a door open for possibilities, talking to your, to your players about it. Um, well, uh, yeah. well, Jim, I mean, you can call them women. You don't have to call them broads. It's the 21st yeah. century. Yes, sorry. Bad. sorry. <laughs> I've been letting so many go by. <laughs> I, had to, like, I had to like use one of them. Um, but we've talked about like PC in PC. Okay? Yeah. yeah just but like, yeah. sometimes um, two PCs might be like, hey, I like the way you swing that sword. And they're like, I like the way you wield that shield. There you go. You know? And then you next thing you know, you're having dinner by candlelight. Uh, <laughs> Uh, over the course of the dragon that y'all just snow oh, together, yes, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> like you could, yeah. I, I mean, this happens, right? Like you'll you'll get um, whether it's people who are couples in real life playing characters who are together, or vice versa, people who get together because their characters did. I read about. I'm not, it never happened to me, but read about people uh, doing that. I, I think even if it's not, right? Like even if it's there's nothing going on between the two players, mm -hmm. it's like their characters are coming together. Uh, these are those moments where you know. You try not to crack jokes if you're another player. Try to keep the, the sort of like, I don't know, nervous energy that you might feel about this if you are a player and this is new territory for you in check. Uh, because mm -hmm. these are things, these are times where, um, you know, a, a just inappropriate joke or, or sort of something said in an awkward moment uh, can kind of like kill the vibe at a table. And I think like it, it's, it's another one of those things that's contributed a lot to why there's less, uh, you know, romance and intimacy and everything in games is because a lot of people just snicker and, and you know, they just can't help, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. just can't help laughing about it. Um, I think it's because it's, you know, a little awkward, a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but for two PCs, obviously, this assumes that both players are down for this, that the dungeon master is down for it because mm -hmm. they are participant in the game and their consent is required for these things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and to allow all of that to play out kind of in a, natural is not the, the word I'm looking for, but more like organic, organic. manner, right? Just sort of emerge uh, from play. And it could be an interesting thing, right? Like, it, does it uh, create jealousies amongst the rest of the party? Is, it, is this sort of, some, is this a kind of game that you want to play where mm -hmm. different PCs either couple up or, or, you know, or show an, an interest in each other, and we're just gonna like play through that. If you're playing in a game, even if it's Dungeons and Dragons, you're playing in a game where most of the uh, PCs and NPCs are like members of high society or something like that. Traditional places that are like usually see marriage as a political or strategic thing right. as opposed to a romantic thing. Um, this kind of game can be really fun yeah. because you're sort of like, I don't know. <laughs> well, like, falling in love in a power hungry <laughs> world is, yeah. is dangerous. It's dangerous. You, you might have to marry somebody but you're you know in what? love yeah. with this person mm -hmm. and guess what drama a drama right like my noble background you know fighter has an arranged marriage like since they before they were born yeah they were promised you know, to yeah their family got together with another family and was like this is what we're going to do especially in a world where like ancestry is so yeah uh, impactful on a character right like think about all the different types of characters that are like yeah someone in my past shacked up with a supernatural something or other mm -hmm. you know and, and so like if, if that's the case if you can like spend in the pre be in the presence of supernatural creatures or like uh you, you know actual produce like offspring with them then now like 
sex and intimacy and reproduction and things have a different take on it. You know, like in our own world, there's no magic, there's no supernatural creatures, and yet there's whole political dynasties that, that bent over backwards to make sure they had the right blood, yeah. you know, like the right ancestry. Now, what if you attached like magic use to that, mm -hmm. right? Like this is, <laughs> I really do see D&D Worlds as one of those places where maybe arranged marriages are a big deal because that's how you get sorcerer's bloodlines. Yeah, you know, well, well, <laughs> what, what you're talking about is the is the creation of the Kwisatz Haderach, right? Sure, I mean, the yeah. Bene Gesserit spent how many genera ten thousand generations to create this one perfect being? Yeah, and that could be something that's going on in your world in the background. It's it absolutely a, a could cult be, yeah. of of warlocks or sorcerers that are like, oh wait, it, the time is almost upon us if we can couple mm -hmm. these bloods. You yes. Know. Yeah, and then like, you know, or if, if if it's one of those things where you're. Uh, you know, you're an elf, right? Like elves, elves and dwarves traditionally have this sort of view that they're, you know, they don't produce a lot of offspring. Their birth rates are low, and, and people are going to just like outbreed them. Right. Uh, and so, like, maybe that's a source of inspiration there. Like, what if your elf's spouse is pregnant, or you are the pregnant elf, mm -hmm. and it's like a big deal, uh, or it's something that, you know, the the threat uh, of of sort of a, a group of young dwarves is, uh, you know, drives play forward, and it's sort yeah. of like goddesses of hearth and home and 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 you know, the like are, are there to spur the PCs onward because mm -hmm. even as we're talking mostly about sex and romance a lot of these things can apply to like any of your characters loved ones right, right? it doesn't have to be their romantic partner it could be their children a, a yeah. close friend something like that and as the DM should you provide maternity downtime I mean, I, well, for one, pregnancy sounds like a downtime activity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. You got a lot to prepare At for, some right? Point, I mean, it, you know, moving on from just like how these interactions kind of work and, 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 you know, you can role play out most of it. You can play out the courtship, the, yeah. the, the you know, the proposal, the, the kind of, uh, you know. The quarreling lovers. <laughs> quarreling. What is, what's the opinion of your, your character's love interest on their adventuring activities? Mm -hmm. Do they hate it? Do they love it? Do they accompany them? Are they mm -hmm. an asset? Are they worried sick about it? Are they sending them sending spells to just be like, hey, I hope you're doing all right? You know, like, <laughs> you know, <did> you get. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, wizards, wait at least two days before you send that sending spell saying, I had a great time. I'd like to get together again. Don't do it the next right, morning. The next Just day. Don't, don't send your animal messenger to the yeah. network. Um, uh, so, those are the kinds of things. Um, you know that, that you can do with that and it doesn't have to be like threatened they can just be part of the world and even just in the backgrounds and, mm -hmm. and move forward as the players get more comfortable with the ideas your group gets more comfortable with it yeah um, what, what about what are you, what are you talking well about I was gonna, I was I was gonna bring it back around to PC uh, oh, yeah, PC yeah. Yeah. Uh, romance and and come back around to oh yes the story between us yes story because it was us. invisible Sun I'll never forget. Um, Never forget. It was it was a it was a cool <laughs> spring night, um, but my my character Galahad, uh -huh. like he was, it was one of those things. I think at one point you like saved me from something. Yeah. Um, yeah. As we were we were having a, a fight with something, and my guy was very, um, it was all about teleporting around mm -hmm. space and time and that whole thing, kind of a Doctor Who sure, takeoff, yeah, yeah. but well, he was a soldier. Right. Um, so technically, it was, so it was a Doctor Who takeoff. Um, <laughs> and and eventually, like, I realized, I was like, Galahad would start having feelings for, uh, for Python. Python. Yeah. And and so I started, like, hanging out and, like, doing side missions with you. Yes. And, like, yeah. being like, hey, let's, yeah, let's do that together. Yeah. And eventually we start talking, and I was like, what does Python want? And what, yeah. what, what, what does she need? Yeah, and you 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 said like oh she needs a big ass sword like right, yeah, like because yeah. you, you, like, that was part of your whole thing, and so part of the maker which was what I was to get to the next level I had to make an item a my item of power yeah and we were coming to the close of of the Invisible Sun game and I said I said hey Grant we've been kind of teasing at this whole shipping Python and Galahad I was like I want to make her a sword but I want to do it in a way where it's like literally I'm giving myself to her. Mm, yeah. Because we had this whole thing with Galahad where he was disappearing, mm -hmm. like his body was going away, and it, had, it was it abated for a while, and that was coming back and it was getting worse. Yeah. And so he realized, like, I'm not going to be here for a while. I need to do this. So I spent every one of my, my points in every ability I had for my qualia and my certus, and I left one point of physicality for my physical existence left as long as I held the sword. Mm -hmm. And then I had you meet me on the rooftop overlooking the city of Satarine, yep. the city that we had defended so many so times. Tender, such a tender moment. And I presented this sword, which was a flamberge, uh -huh. uh, curved blade. Your yeah. Python's the, the 
She it's, calls upon the serpent. Calls so upon she's the like serpent. a battle mage who's yeah, yeah big. And so and tall imagine and, yeah. basically the way I design, uh, designed it was uh, full of doom. The, the dual snakes of Thulsa Doom and the handle wrapped around each other and they, they uh -huh. peel off in the cross guard and then one of them is the full blade, all scaled and everything. And it was a moment, like we only had one moment. Uh -huh. And it was a light, it was a delicate kiss as, yeah. as I handed you the sword and as you took it away and I let go, Galahad disappears. disappears. Yeah. And because he, he put everything into that sword and it was the only way I could make that item. Yeah. But I thought that that was just like, it was nice. It was, it's really cool. There wasn't yeah. anything gratuitous about it. No, no. It, and and it, everybody loved it. It was great. And, and to me, it was one of those things that arose emergently out of, out of play because both of our characters had this, like, uh, focus on this war that, that, yeah. that is in Saturn's uh, sort of setting. Yeah. And for I, my character, it was like, I didn't get to do it. I was like, I, I, was, I got sent, to, sent into exile before she yeah. could uh, go. But she was also a trained battle mage, spent mm -hmm. all her life preparing for this moment. So it was one of those things where when uh, I think our characters had a bond early on, uh, if only because I was like, oh, well, my, you know, she's a soldier. And if she like knows Galahad, who's a veteran, then she probably just like spends a lot of time with Galahad going like, well, what was it like? You know, what yeah. did you learn? Like, uh, or just working through her own experience of it. it. To me, the moment where I, where it was like, I realized that our characters had something that we could, we could develop and that could really add to the game was that moment when I'm sort of like reading through the rule books and going like, oh my God, like how would, this is the truth of the setting. Just as an aside, that was also represented my character doing a bunch of research. Yeah. And so it was like, all right, uh, Python's like been, you know, neck deep in her research and a friend of hers has come over to sort of like check up on her. Hey, I haven't seen you around in a while. You've been late. You didn't meet me at this place we were supposed to meet at. Mm -hmm. She's disheveled, you know, just like completely absorbed in academic research as one does yeah. as a mighty wizard or Vizle. And when the house gets attacked and we have to flee together and sort of like survive getting attacked because Python's uncovering some sort of terrible truth about the setting. Uh, that's when it's sort of like is there's like there's tension there, right? Mm -hmm. There's an energy between what who Python is, which is someone who's like so single-mindedly focused on one thing, she can't see that there's other options available for her yeah. until they're literally gone, right? Well, yeah, and and my guy who was the former soldier who's been ready to lay down his weapon for a long time, and you're ready to pick it up, and yes. it was just a nice natural passing of the of the torch, so to speak. Very much, and so to me, it's an example of that. It's probably I, it's my favorite one just because like I got to experience it sort of firsthand. Usually, I'm the DM in these situations, and almost always I say I say don't joke about these things, but like half the time these things come out of a joke, <laughs> like. <laughs> There was well, uh, Gildan and Blue in, in Lamb Tweet Two Rivers where it sort of like started as a joke and then became like, no, this goblin and bugbear like care about each other. They're they're lovers. You know? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I would say probably in Starward Bound it's a it's a tad more infantile, but again, we we chatted about this. <laughs> yeah. Like Elmer is like, oh, he goes to whorehouses all the time, and yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have that in there. Is we okay with that? Yeah. And. They did. It's bed, beds, baths, and beyond. Um, <laughs> is the name of the inn slash whorehouse, right? Um, and bathhouse. And so yeah, they went in there, and you know, it's it's great because like Kiana playing E four hundred four, who's a warforged right. and that, like doesn't understand why people well, why do, we this, do this at all. Yeah, got to be just aghast and like, what what, what is going on right now? You know, <laughs> and the whole time it's like we pull we, we pull away from this as any time you want, and and you know they've been to a, a couple of whorehouses now, and there you go. You know, it's the game to blow off some steam. It's the game you want to play, right? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? I, I mean, it's similar. In, in, in another character uh, in Lamb Between Rivers, Murr, is a, a, a College of Whispers bard, and uh, you know, character um, Laugh Love Lindy was like, yeah, she's a courtesan. She, you know, it's kind of like the uh, companions from Firefly. Yeah, sort of like sees people. It's her side business, right? Her night business, mm -hmm. uh, she calls it. And so it occasionally comes up, and she's her character has. You know, booty calls and her <laughs> her favorite partners and the people she goes to just to make some money and yeah. it's a it's largely played off just as a downtime activity that we get up to when we're you know the character's gone. Well, that right? happens. In, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> but it has occasionally been something that I've used to say like, well, a disgruntled former uh, lover of Mers is is part of the reason uh, you know behind something, yeah. or is the uh, source of a rumor that then another NPC picks up and runs with or something like that so it's been ones where I've, I've sort of like used that background and, and sort of the the connections that it has with romance and intimacy and like to uh, create interesting situations for them mm -hmm. but these are examples that I'm not sure a few years ago that I that I would have been in a position like I'd be like oh yeah it'd be great I should we should do that you know but 
now playing with just different people and different situations and, and you know, exploring different ways, yeah. it's, it's produced a much more satisfying gaming experience for me. Uh, most definitely. Like, at what point do you think it's appropriate to introduce like mechanics into these dynamics? Like well, the I rolling mean, of dice and special abilities and things like well, that. Well, uh, to me, like again, if you're talking about lines and veils, I honestly don't see a reason why actual love making should be played out for like relatability or or desire. Sure. Uh, yeah. in, instead of like respect or honor, like thinking about those kinds of yeah, systems, yeah, yeah, like yeah. how relatable you are, like when when an entertainer comes into town. Yes. How much are all the how, are they Beatles fans? <laughs> or are they Nickelback fans? You know what I mean? Yeah, shots fired, Nickelback. Um, you know what I mean? Like, do the women go crazy because, like, how famous is your bard? Uh -huh. yeah, like, yeah. can they even go anywhere in town because they're being ass assailed by fans galore? Yeah. Like, sure. like, this is things to think about, right? Yeah. So you're talking about, like, I, like is there a stat or a score that represents sort yeah. of desirability uh, or something like that? I think I think some people trade like treat charisma that way. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not sure. I, I'm not, not a fan of that method of sort of, like, Charisma is your attractiveness level. Well, no, um, yeah, but, but I think it's it's a it's how relatable and how uh, attractive you can be sure. until people realize you're lying. Right. And yeah. then that's what <laughs> this is like. Yeah. The people that know the truth behind that mask that oh, yeah, you sure, put yeah. up, you're really good at being approachable and whatever. But you're just trying to get what you want. Yeah. And people start finding that out. Well, that's when you're like your reputation, and so it's like oh, reputation, sure. yeah, yeah. but reputation. adjacent. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean now. I, I can see something like that, particularly if you're going to be playing in a game where the social relationships of your PCs really matter. Yeah. Like, they're not wandering from town to town. Like, you're really digging into, you know, the, the NPCs and how they relate to one another, how they relate to the PCs, what their goals and secrets and everything are. I, I can definitely see having something like that being really useful for those. Yeah, instead of plot radar, you just have hot radar? <laughs> no? Okay, I don't know. It's just... Top of my head. <laughs> I'm thinking personally. I'm thinking of like spells. This yeah. is one of those where I, I think oh, like wow. <laughs> this is a this is one of those where I'm like I know people make fun of books like the Book of Erotic Fantasy or mm -hmm. other things, but I also look at things like that and I go, yeah, well, there probably would be a lot of spells related to sex and romance and intimacy, whether they're like Wait. spells to help you get pregnant, spells to help you deal with a pregnancy you don't want, spells to enhance the experience, so, you know, all kinds. Yeah. Of or if you have you know kind of loner wizards who spend all their times with books and not around other people. Listen, the Conjured Lover spell in Invisible Sun is a great spell. Thank you. I yeah. um, <laughs> just wanted to set you up for that. I love that spell. Uh, but it would be, like, why isn't there something that's like, yeah, this is this creates a consensual uh, partner for you or yeah. something like that. Uh, now, I, I think that I, I think that's a consequence because I like spells that are reflect the world that exists and I then and, and not necessarily that produce a certain gameplay experience yeah. like I think the spells in the player's handbook are there largely to produce a certain style of gameplay and the fact that they don't have like big flashy effects or like that mm -hmm. you have to concentrate on a lot of things that are that used to be just sort of permanent is is there for a reason mm -hmm. uh, and and I also but and so I like spells that are like yeah they're not there for any reason other than someone would have invented this if they lived in this world but again these are ones where like I might never detail them, I might just sort of like mention their existence. Of course there's other sorts of like spells that are in the player's handbook that you could use to justify all this disguise self, uh, enhance ability, alter self. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I would go anywhere near using enchantments, charms and the like. Uh, well, but that, that, that kind of gets in there, but you know, you can certainly, you know, polymorph. Certainly, right? Like, I, <laughs> uh, you tell know, me, a wizard has a polymorphed himself. Oh, sure, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, there's a one of <laughs> one of uh, Emma's characters, her her dwarven paladin, who's neutral evil and a oath of treachery. Uh, you, you know, he and his spouse drink filters of love in each other's presence because they just want to be in love with each other. And mm -hmm. they both do it, and they both are the first person that each other sees, and therefore are charmed by and everything. Talking to her about it is like. Is this like how do you how does this work? Like, what's the dynamic here? And it's well, like, yeah, I mean, know. is this just roofie juice or <laughs> like, I mean, is there, you know? And the way Emma explains it, it's like, okay, I mean, he can't feel anything otherwise. Otherwise, he can't feel anything. He can't feel anything. And, and he will only do it if she does it. If he does, like, right. There has to be complete consent in us forcing ourselves to fall in love with one another. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, I, I, I still like. Funny. I'm like, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's one way to do it. You got to get past the do, smell one somehow. One way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a something to add to your games. It should enhance them. It should make them better. It should make the 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 act of playing your character more fulfilling. 
it should add something new and interesting to your games and should never be a detriment. Uh, if it's ever something that's like, or I didn't like that, or this was weird, or something, tread carefully. Be open to listening to each other. Well, I mean, it sounds like I'm giving marriage advice now. Well, it is. Uh, <laughs> it is, and that's fine. But I mean, you know, communication is key in almost any endeavor yeah, that you do. True. That's right? very true. Uh, and, very true. You know, we all got here somehow, uh, and we <laughs> continue to uh, procreate. So there you go. Being Just offered about it in your games, a little like, eh, come exactly. on, very much. And besides, like, who's going to miss out the opportunity to have a big monster orgy in your D and D game? So yeah. you know, that's the only way you get you it. Know. <laughs> and Where do you two, think metaphors come from? And if two PCs are having <laughs> having relations and the DM is involved, is no matter what, is that polyamorous or is that always a three way? <laughs> <laughs> It's my uh, Autonomous Wizards Collective slash Polycule. Oh, God. <laughs> Head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. Want to see us play? We've got games every week on Twitch, which we upload to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, give us a thumbs up, and tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. You all right? You okay? I, I just, it's just, we, we're supposed to be like RPG daddies, like dad's giving the talk, the birds in the beat. Dude, this is Leather Daddy. What are you, come on, man. Besides, I got a Mad Max Halloween costume party after this, so. Are those assless chaps? I didn't, was there any other kind? It's a fair point. point.